Well, I want to give you one of the most powerful keys to the healing ministry that I have ever learned. When this key to the healing ministry was taught to me, it completely transformed the way that I ministered God's healing power to the sick. It intensified the miracles. It intensified the healing anointing like nothing else I've ever seen. That key is simply setting the atmosphere for healing. Now, I'm bringing this series, How to Heal the Sick, to a conclusion now. Now, there's a lot more I could talk about concerning the healing ministry, but I do sense in my spirit that it's time to change directions. But as we conclude this series, I want you to really receive the word that's being ministered today because this key, I believe, is a powerful one. But first, Steve Abaktizuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship, and then we're going to get right into this lesson. I know it's going to bless you. Here is Steve Abaktizuma. You are God alone from before time began. You are God alone. You are on your throne. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne, you are God alone, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne, you are God alone. You are God alone He's unbreakable Unshakable Unstoppable that's who you are. He's unbreakable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, good times and bad you are on your throne you are God alone so right off the top I want to do away with a very common misconception concerning the healing ministry of Jesus now I understand that there is a great deal of importance that needs to be placed on taking ministry outside the four walls of the church. I believe that. I believe in evangelism. I believe in ministering to the sick. I believe in prophesying outside the four walls of the church. And by that, I mean going out into the streets, going out into the public places. That's an important part of ministry. But what I think is becoming neglected is the setting of the atmosphere for miracles. Now, Jesus actually did this. And one of the biggest misconceptions concerning Jesus' healing ministry is that he had this very loose, aimless, wandering almost type of ministry where he kind of just walked around the streets and hung out outside and basically just wandered and did his ministry. 
But that is actually not the truth. The truth is that Jesus traveled from town to town and very specifically, very intentionally would visit the synagogue, would visit the temple, and he would go there and he would minister the word and the people would come to him. He would minister the word and then he would perform the miracles. Now, I'm going to show you a couple examples of this in the scripture. And that first scripture I'm going to read to you is Matthew chapter 9, verse number 35. Look at what the scripture says here, and let's read this very carefully. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. Where did he preach the gospel? In the synagogue. Where did he minister to the sick? In the synagogue. Sure, he many times healed people in the streets and he taught on grassy hills. We know this. But the scripture makes it clear that Jesus traveled. Look at the scripture again. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area. In other words, it was well on his way to the temple. It was while he was on his way to the synagogue that he stopped to minister to the people in the streets. So we have to break from this mentality that says that if it's inside of the church, if it's structured, if it's organized, then it can't be spiritual. The fact of the matter is that often God will breathe upon systems and structures that were constructed or put in place in obedience to him. He moves through his church. God organized his church. He moves through his leadership. The Holy Spirit anointed his leadership. Jesus had a very specific, very structured style of ministry. He discipled 12. Outside of that, he had a little bit of a larger group of disciples. Outside of that, he ministered to the masses, but he was very specific. He was very organized. He was very on point. He was very appointment driven. He was always on time. He walked in accordance to the will of the Father, and you and I must do the same. We cannot approach the ministry and treat it like we can be aimless and we can just wander and we can just kind of do this or that from day to day. Some people even read the Bible like that. They just jump from verse to verse to verse, never really understanding the fullness of the context of any portion of Scripture, never going through an entire book. And in this, we find lazy Christianity. I remember growing up in church and we'd often have evangelists come through and I would often see our guest speakers, they would grab their notes and they would kind of throw them to the side and they'd say, I had a sermon, but I believe God wants to take over and we're just going to flow tonight. And while I do believe that there are times where you need to set your sermon aside, I think that there is this mindset that has to be addressed, the mindset that again says something to the effect of structure is negative or organization is bad. And so these preachers would throw their notes to the side and they would act as if the more they studied, the less spiritual they were. But the opposite is true. So in our generation, we look at structure or, for example, big government or the people in charge as the evil ones, as things that need to be done away with. But God is a God of order. God is a God of structure. God is a God of intention and purpose. Jesus did not wander aimlessly in the streets and minister to the sick. Jesus on his way to the synagogue would minister to the sick. Jesus on his way to people's homes would minister to the sick. He would preach the good news, but he primarily purposed in his heart that he would go to the synagogues, he would go to the temples, he would go to the places where the people gathered, then he would preach the word and he would minister to the sick. We see in Matthew chapter 26, verse number 55, the scripture says this, Then Jesus said to the crowd, My son, dangerous revolutionary, that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why did you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. So Jesus himself tells us that he frequented the temple. He frequented the synagogue. He was there ministering the word of God. He was, again, not out wandering and just being aimless. He was very intentional. He was very structured. He was very systematic. And we must minister to the sick in the same way. You cannot argue with results. I've seen the results that come when people are aimless. 
And there are some results, yes, but that doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. There is also this way, and I found it to be a more effective way. So I want to read to you a portion of Scripture, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about this setting of the atmosphere. And this is found in Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. Look at what the Bible says. One day he, referring to Jesus, was teaching, and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. I'm going to read that phrase again. Let that stand out in your mind. And the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. And some men were carrying on a bed a man who was paralyzed. And they were trying to bring him in and to set him down in front of him. But not finding any way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down through the tiles with his stretcher into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, so Jesus sees the faith of the men who brought the man who was sick, not necessarily the man himself. Seeing their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, aware of their reasonings, answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins have been forgiven you, or to say, Get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up and pick up your stretcher and go home. Immediately he got up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went home glorifying God. They were all struck with astonishment and began glorifying God and they were filled with fear saying, we have seen remarkable things today. The crowd was gathered so that the crowd could witness the miraculous. Jesus purposely did this. You see, some people get offended at the gathering of crowds and they say, well, you're making a show of it. Absolutely, I'm making a show of it. I want to show everyone the power of God. I want to display for all to see the power of the Holy Spirit at work among us in our modern day. And I want to demonstrate to the world that Jesus is alive and well, that Jesus still heals the sick, that the power of the Holy Spirit still moves, and that is done by setting the atmosphere with the Word of God. You see, Jesus gathered the people. You notice that the man couldn't even get in because of the crowds. Jesus didn't go, wait a minute, everybody stop, this isn't right. I need to leave the four walls of this building and go out to that man who can't get in. No, what did he do? He stood there and he kept teaching. Why? Because the Bible says, and this is very key. Look again at this verse. Look at how key this is. And the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. The power was there. The atmosphere was set. The miraculous was ready to be obtained by faith if only those who listened would reach out in faith and grab it. In fact, the atmosphere was so set that the man in the stretcher didn't even have to have the faith to receive his miracle because it was the faith of his friends that brought him his healing. But the atmosphere was set. The grounds were permeated with the Word of God. The grounds were permeated with His truth. Jesus glorifying God through His worship of the Father and the teaching of the Word set an atmosphere for miracles. So again, I'm not against going out on the streets. Go and do that. But also recognize that there is an importance that we must place on also setting the atmosphere, that that is not a negative thing to do, that that is not something that should be avoided. We should, at times, set an atmosphere. And in fact, different people minister to the sick in different ways. I mean, think about like people like who we all love and I love. Think about Todd White. That man is anointed to go out on the streets. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen hardly anybody who can really do it like Todd White. Go out on the streets, minister to the sick. That is powerful. And then I think of someone like Oral Roberts, who he would go and he'd lay hands on the sick in church services and in tents and people would be healed. They'd come up one by one and he'd lay hands on them. They'd be healed. But the way I've been taught to minister to the sick, as some of you might have noticed, is a little different. Yes, I sometimes lay hands, and yes, I minister to people on the streets as well, but the way the Lord has primarily gifted me 
is I will go to a place, hold a venue just like Jesus did, invite the people to come, set the atmosphere, and then I don't even have to lay hands on the sick. The presence of the Holy Spirit just fills the room with such intensity that miracles start happening all over the room. And then I invite the people up to come and share what God has done. So there's different ways of flowing. That's the way the Lord works through me. Everyone's unique and different in their own way. But we do see that that's modeled after Jesus. Jesus did lay hands on the people in the streets, but Jesus also set an atmosphere. And we must learn to set that atmosphere as well. We need it. You see, the atmosphere is there, not because the Holy Spirit is some sensitive dove that moves away from us and flutters away whenever something is disruptive. No, the Holy Spirit is not some sensitive dove that moves away from us in that manner. It's not that God needs the atmosphere in order to move. It's that people need the atmosphere in order to receive. And that is the big difference. You see, distraction kills the anointing. I've sat in church services where I've heard something from the preacher that was so powerful, it changed my life. You ever have a preacher say something like that, where they say something and it just sticks with you and it transforms you and you're never the same again? Now imagine if somebody's cell phone had gone off right at the moment that the preacher was speaking that and you turn to see what their call is all about and by the time you turn back, you miss the word that God had for you. That is because of distraction and distraction kills moments like that. And so in our services, what we do is very practical. We will go and we'll have our prayer team come. First of all, we have people praying up to our events days before. And we'll have our prayer team come and they'll literally lay hands with oil on every seat in the venue, even the chairs for the overflow sections. And they'll go and they'll lay hands and then I have them walk around the property declaring that that place belongs to Jesus, that there is no power that belongs there but the power of the Holy Ghost. And then during the service, I have these same people in a back room somewhere where they cannot be heard, but they're praying over the service as I minister. And let me tell you something, I can feel the difference. And then when I get onto the stage, it's a very, a very we, sh- we say, very excellent atmosphere. We, we go as far as making sure there's no cables that are visible on the stage where we minister. We make sure the music is anointed because the prophets even needed minstrels to help them minister to the sick, help them minister to God's people because some of those people needed that music, that anointing to bring about an atmosphere of heaven. Think about King David when he prayed, uh, he played for Saul as he played the demonic spirits left Saul. Why? Because the music was anointed. We set the music just right. We set the stage clean so that there's, it's all about avoiding distraction. Why is that important? It's because when we're not distracted, we can look to Jesus. And when we can look to Jesus, He becomes more real to us. And the moment that Jesus becomes more real to you than your sickness, you'll be made whole. So this is why it's key to avoid all distraction. We will make sure there's no disruptions during the service. The music will begin to play. The people will begin to worship. And I'll instruct them. I'll say, just forget about your sickness. Forget about your pain. Forget about your struggle and look to Jesus now. And they'll begin to do that. And as they do, they grab hold of the revelation. And then these rivers of healing begin to move throughout the... I I can feel it even as I'm talking to you right now. These rivers of healing begin to move throughout the atmosphere and people start getting healed. The way Catherine Coleman ministered to the sick, she would just be preaching and suddenly the power of God would start to move. So yes, there are some practical steps we take to setting the atmosphere. And then there are some spiritual steps we take to setting the atmosphere. But you can set the atmosphere anywhere. You can set the atmosphere in the street. You can set the atmosphere in a building. But wherever you are, setting the atmosphere is all about removing distraction and bringing people into an awareness of Jesus. When they see Jesus, everything changes. The Word comes alive. The Word is made flesh. Jesus needs to be the focus. And in order for Jesus to become the focus, you must remove distraction. And it is the removal of distraction that is the setting 
of the atmosphere. Well, I pray that you are inspired to go now and set the atmosphere for those of you who you love, for those who you love who need healing in their body. Go and minister to the sick in all the different ways that God has anointed us to minister to the sick. If you want to do it like Todd White, do that. If you want to do it like Oral Roberts and go lay hands in churches, go do that. If you want to do it like me and set the atmosphere in that way, go and do that. But either way, go and minister and realize that no matter what the setting is, you can to some degree set the atmosphere for healing. This is a key I know that is kind of an obscure teaching. You don't really hear this sort of thing. But this is a key that will change your healing ministry, the healing ministry that God has placed on your life. I want to pray with you now. Let's pray even now that where you are, let me show you, I want to demonstrate this to you right now. Why don't we pray that where you are becomes an atmosphere of heaven and that the distraction would be removed from all around you. If you're watching me on your phone, put your headphones in. If you're watching this in your room, Put away everything in that room that distracts you. Wherever you are right now, do whatever you can to limit distraction. I'm going to demonstrate this to you right now. I want you to stretch your hands toward mine. If you can, if you're able, close your eyes. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one receiving this prayer now. And I ask, Lord, for your healing power to begin to flow. I want you to see Jesus, the Son of the living God. He's the same Jesus who walked the shores of Galilee. The crowds pressed around him. The desperate, they drew near to him. The authority of heaven upon his shoulder, the power of God in his hands, the fiery love of God in his eyes. He looks at you now. He's looking at you right now. What might you feel if he touches you? What power moves through his being? currents of electricity, fire of the Holy Ghost. He is Jesus, the Son of God. Look to Him now. Reach out in faith and say, Jesus, just say His name. Lord, touch Him, I pray. Let the miracle anointing flow now in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see what happens when you begin to focus on Him. Ah, I can sense Him near right now. Wow. Well, that is it for the lesson and the prayer. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like to join Spirit Church, it's free. You get an email every week with a brand new teaching, and you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry team. You'd be joining over 3,000 members from all around the world. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch to sign up to become a Spirit Church member today. Well, I want to read your comments now. And these are the comments from last week's teaching, How to Heal the Sick, Part 4, The Moment of Faith. Hazel writes, Thank you, Brother David. I have just received my healing with my asthma. I give all praise and glory to the Holy Spirit. I can feel his warmth in my lungs. God bless your preaching and your team. God bless you all. Amen. Well, I am so rejoicing with you because that is the power of the Holy Spirit at work. Remember, this is his channel. This is his work. This is what he wants to do. The Holy Spirit runs this channel. See, I was right in the middle of a series and the Holy Spirit said, I want you to change directions now. So I'm changing directions. But here's the thing. This is partly what makes this channel unique, is that we just let the Holy Spirit move and words of knowledge happen and healing happens and the presence of God touches His people all while they watch the content. The next commenter writes, Amen, the Father led me to your channel. Thank you for the wise words and it was nice to hear Stephen's song. And in case you haven't done so, be sure to check out Stephen Moctezuma's playlist here on Encounter TV. 
Another commenter writes, God bless you, Brother David. You are such a blessing to this generation. Well, so are you. We all are called to reach this generation. Sheikh writes, Thank you very much for your prayer. God bless you, Pastor. I really love your videos and I feel the Holy Spirit in them. See, there it is again. You feel the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And Kate O, oh, the final comment I'm reading, wrote, Good day to you. I was having a backache since yesterday and it was kind of intense. After watching the video, I have realized that the pain is gone. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your ministry. The song is absolutely beautiful too. God bless you. Amen. Well, I am so excited to report to you on our update for the campaign that we've been doing. So the campaign that we've been doing has been a campaign to raise monthly support for our ministry so that we can reach a thousand new $30 a month partners and so that we can get into our brand new ministry facility. Here's the update. Our monthly support fundraising is done. We're finished. There it is up on the screen. Take a look. 100%. Thank you, partners. Now, here's what I need from you. Those of you who have partnered with us, stay with it. Don't stop. We are now relying upon your support as we take this next step of faith into the new building. Now, for those of you who don't know, we're looking for a new building. And I'll keep you updated on what we'll need for renovations and all that. But right now, we are just in a wonderful place in ministry. We're ready to do this. I have three people right now looking all over Southern California for the perfect location for us. So you have to pray we find the perfect location. Now, there are many more updates I want to give to you, but now is not the time. They're all really good, but I'll give them to you as we go. But I just want to say thank you. But we are still, as usual, raising monthly support just in general for the ministry. So now I'm going to begin switching back to just raising regular monthly support. But thank you for those of you who signed up for the monthly support on the building. But as far as the monthly goes, we have it. We have enough for the lease, the maintenance, the insurance, the security, you name it, and the utilities. We have the monthly costs. We're good. But keep partnering with us and we will keep growing this ministry. So for those of you who sign up to become a $30 a month partner today, your support will help to go to touch all the areas of our ministry and help us do all the things we do. I will send you a copy of either Carriers of the Glory or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. You get to choose. So partner with us today. Partner with us or give a one-time gift to help us with everything that we're doing. I know we're coming into the end of the year 2017. So consider doing a year-end gift. We know that people often towards the end of the year start looking places where they can give their final donations. Consider this ministry if it's been a blessing to you, even from your business perhaps. And I know God will bless you for it. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.